Hello everyone, this is Ming Zhong. Welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to identify the supply and demand zone uh, as a support and resistance for swing trading. So this is part of the um, continuation of my previous video, how to identify the support and resistance. So generally, uh, supply and demand zones are really a key concepts uh, essential for all traders because usually you will encounter the supply and demand zones first before you hit the um, support and resistance levels. So let's just get started here. As you can see that uh, I'm on a Dow Jones index, um, just like the other uh, methods that I have shown all of you before. Um, these kind of methods are fractal and you can just uh, apply it to any time frame and any kind of the instruments just like um, indices, uh, futures, uh, stocks, bonds, etc. So don't really need to limit um, the methods to only indices. So as you can see that um, we are in the time frame, a daily time frame and somewhere around 2018 and in January we have seen a very sharp sell off. The reacting thing is the US, uh, US China trade war. And using the support and resistance concepts, then we can just uh, draw up two lines or zones. Uh, this one is the resistance at the top because we have identified the swing highs. And at the swing lows, there are a few points, then we can just uh, draw them up as one zone. So these are the support um, area, and this is the uh, uh, resistance level. But apart from that, I would like to emphasize um, there are two key uh, big spread bar here, as you can see. Let me just uh, use this uh, to drag this out. So this is a big spread bar that I'm talking about. The first one there and the second big spread bar is definitely this bar here. So we have two really um, big spread uh, bearish bar here. Um, this is the uh, key factors that I would like to identify um, as a supply zone because this is where the price accelerate to the downside. So as you can see that previously we have uh, quite a um, normal range of candle, normal range, normal range, normal range. And suddenly that we have a um, big spread candle like this or big spread bars where it just uh, breaks down from this uh, localized support area and we see that the price accelerates to the downside and subsequently the second bar is even larger although it, have a, it has sunk some kind of the demand tail form but still it is a very bearish uh, spread bars so this is uh, where I would like to uh, identify as the supply area or supply bars because that um, just right before these uh, levels, the uh, resistance levels, then we have these two bars that we need to overcome. So after we have a sharp sell-off, um, the price just uh, have a rally up. And you can see that when it rallies to this swing high here, let me just uh, highlight this, okay? So suddenly that we have a reaction so we have a rally up and subsequently we have a reaction so look at where we are right now so we are somewhere around this big spread bar okay so you can see that the price actually reacts uh, within this supply zone so this whole area is the supply zone that means that uh, because there are quite a lot of the supply and a lot of the people just uh, dump the uh, ETF or dump the futures or dump the stocks. So we see that uh, there is a, a, a acceleration to the downside. So after, after we just approaching or almost uh, hit the high of this bar, then we have a reaction here. So after that, we have another uh, rally up and look at where we are. We're just about halfway of this first bar here. So these two bars um, are very important bars for us to overcome in order to hit the resistance level. So this is uh, what I will call the supply bars or the supply zone. 
So as long as um, we are still hanging around somewhere um, uh, within these two bars, then definitely uh, I don't really expect uh, the breakout or any uh, 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 test of this uh, resistance anytime soon because um, you can see that just right after we have the rally then we uh, we see that the price actually just consolidates somewhere around this area only uh, I think that's from February to August um, almost six six months yeah that's almost six months half a year time we have been consolidating consolidating around this area so you can see that this two bar actually acts as a really um, strong resistance area or levels so after that you can see that um, the price actually uh, settled down where we see that the volatility is getting lower and lower where you can just tell it from the candle spread or the bar spread um, we have a relatively uh, smaller candles here or smaller bars here compared to a really um, long bars big spread bars somewhere around there so you see that um, the volatility actually settle down and eventually just uh, move up and finally it just uh, break above this two uh, supply zone there okay so it just take about six months or uh, to actually just break above slowly and after that it actually hit the resistance level um, attempted to break above uh, two times but actually fail and just right after this kind of the false breakout situation we have another uh, big spread bar here so this is another big spread bar that uh, I would like to highlight similar um, to this bar or this bar here we have another um, big spread bar uh, shown up in this, in this uh, region so this point there I will also mark this bar like this because this is a very important bar to overcome if we want to see uh, a bullish continuation for the price to keep going up so this is the first uh, area or region or zone that we need to overcome so again um, as you can see that uh, just right after this uh, supply bar then we have a swing down okay just is the swing down and subsequently um, the rally actually just bump into um, well above halfway of this bar but still uh, not able to just overcome this bar here and eventually it just uh, have another reaction down here and then another reaction up there and you can see that apart from this bar here we can also identify others key bars something like this one and also uh, this bar as well so these are the supply zone or supply bars that we need to overcome before we see some uh, continuation to the upside for Dow Jones index so if we just draw a line from this bar here we can see that just right after um, just draw this up okay so just right after this we have a rally up and look at where the price uh, heading to is just right into this bar here so it actually is sort of like a test of this bar so the rally is just like as a test of this bar to see how much supply left uh, for for these levels so we find that well there are still some more supply and we see sell off continue so this is how I'll interpret uh, this kind of the big spread bar so I will treat it as a supply zone so one bar second bar so the third bar there and eventually we see a very sharp sell off into the Christmas and New Year and suddenly uh, we have a strong comeback uh, v-shaped rebound 
Um, okay. All right. Another thing uh, we we talk about a uh, supply bar or the supply zone. Now let's just uh, come back a little bit. Uh, talk about the demand bars or demand zone as well. So just like the supply bars or the uh, supply zone for demand bars or demand zone, uh, we can identify the big spread bar like this. So you can see that we have a bullish um, bar here. The spread is huge. So this is one of the region that uh, I will pay attention to because if we want to see really bearish result, then first thing that I will want to see is a break below um, this uh, bullish bar here because this is where the price uh, accelerate to the upside that means that there are a lot of the demand come in uh, at these levels so this is a very important levels and or a, a key zones or the key areas so as you can see that um, every times that the price dip into this zone there are some kind of the um, buying and especially when it dip below and also I think this is another bar we need to mark as well so you can see that the bar on the 6th of February and also the bar on the 9th of February these two bars actually are very important bar it actually forms um, the demand zone where uh, the price actually uh, accelerate to the upside so you can see that especially this bar here you can see that the, the demand tail um, so at the end of the day and some people or some big funds just see some value um, in the index and they just uh, uh, buy it up so this is where the demands come in so it is um, not surprised to see the price actually bounce back up uh, from when, when it did below uh, this zone there so you can see that the price actually uh, bounce up from there and also bounce up from there as well and even he has another test yeah, also keep bouncing up so this is uh, also coincides or very close to the um, a resistance level or resistance or sorry the support levels or support zones that uh, we have marked previously around this area so this one is also considered as the demand zone as well so one of the key concept is that um, if we think that this is a redistribution zone means that um, people are busy uh, to distribute the stocks within uh, this area then first thing that we need to see is the price actually would like to commit below um, these two demand bar here so actually this marks the uh, region or the zones uh, for the price to commit below in order for us to form a very bearish bias like oh this zone is actually a distribution zone or distribution structure so you can see that um, this is how we can easily mark the supply zone or the demand zone based on the price spread and let's uh, go through a few more example okay back to this um, this bar or this price level this structure here um, we see that the price actually this uh, accelerate to the downside and subsequently we have a strong recovery let's see where we can mark again um, okay so this is one of the uh, big spread bar that we have seen um, this one definitely as well but we can see that the price actually just uh, run away from this bar and yeah okay I think this is another good example as well because as we can see that this is a demand bar where you can see that uh, the price actually accelerated the upside and the spread is huge and most often after we see this kind of the uh, big spread bar or we call it the demand uh, zone then we'll see a test of this bar so this is quite a key concept so usually uh, we'll see a test of this bar which happens at the bar just uh, after this bar we see that uh, there's a test here and also we see that there's another test uh, on this uh, bearish bar on the 3rd of January as well so this reaction or this bar actually just uh, tested this uh, demand bar uh, where it just see that whether there is any sort of the demand 
Well, there, there is because uh, where you can see that the volume actually picks up. Uh, there are some kind of the increase of the volume, but uh, while this, the volume is increased, we see that not only the supply increase, the demand also increase. Um, how do we know that? Um, it's actually confirmed just uh, after this bearish bar because it actually goes up. <clears throat> so the increase in this volume just uh, consists of both demand and the supply once it dips below uh, this uh, demand zone here. And what else can we just uh, look for? Okay, as we can see that this is another big spread bar here. Uh, we can pay attention to. And if we just uh, look at the price action, um, just draw some line there. And we can see that when when the price actually comes back, it actually bounces up a bit. But this one is actually uh, coincides with the uh, support line or support level as well. So this is just a spring. I call it a springboard or a spring where the price temporarily commit below the support level and immediately just uh, reverse above the support level. And subsequently, uh, what else we have? <clears throat> okay. So we have quite a few um, big spread bar here as well. So this is a bearish bar supply zone. This is also a um, bearish bar, but um, you can see that it's very close to um, the resistance or the support level uh, just above or underneath uh, the supply or demand zone there. So this is the uh, supply zone, but uh, just above it is the uh, resistance. But uh, you can see that the price actually just goes up and it didn't, didn't touch the resistance. But uh, it did test uh, tested this supply uh, bar or the supply zone. So I think this is quite a handy concept because when we see this kind of the uh, supply bar or the demand bar, we always expect a test of this bar, whether it comes just a few bars uh, after this or it can come just maybe one or two months after this. So we always expect a test of the supply zone or the demand zone to to check whether there are uh, any excessive supply or any excessive demand uh, that's left over. So in this case, uh, the price actually uh, react uh, within this supply zone here, and we have another um, reaction here. And subsequently, uh, what else we have? Okay, we have a breakout and just goes higher and higher. All right, um, yeah, this is uh, what I would like to introduce uh, regarding the supply and demand zone, and it can act as a support and resistance levels very well. Um, I think that uh, it, it is really a handy concept for all traders to pay attention to uh, on top of the typical or classical uh, support, support and resistance levels. So just uh, pay attention to the supply and demand zones where especially where you see the big spread bars uh, together with uh, increasing of the volume as well. Um, usually I will just uh, look at the spreads but if we, if we have um, access to the volume information then it's uh, even better because um, the spread is a uh, very key levels or, or the key uh, factors for us to pay attention to. That's where the price uh, accelerate to the downside or accelerate to the upside. So that's it for this video and I hope you enjoy this. So if you like this video, just click like and hover to my channel and follow me. Do remember to subscribe to my video channel so that you get instant notification for my future videos. All right. Thank you very much and I will talk to you later. Alright, thank you. Bye-bye.